I welcome everyone to another session of our Tuesday Tech Security Webinar. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, active threat detection and hunting using uh, Sophos Intercept X with EDR. So uh, we have a previous uh, webinar where we did uh, uh, the uh, Sophos Intercept X uh, features. So for today, the highlight of today is going to be showcasing uh, how the product actually works. So just permit me, I'll just have to run through the slide uh, very fast. Okay, so uh, for an introduction, my name is uh, Abuja Ahmed Okoyemi. Uh, I'm a network and um, security engineer for HM Limited. Uh, I'm a tech enthusiast and then I have a certification in uh, Cisco, Sophos, uh, SolarWinds. Uh, my hobbies include uh, watching football, learning, uh, also sharing the knowledge, and then having fun with uh, close uh, friends. So the basic agenda for today is uh, the first thing I'm going to take is the, the current IT security challenges uh, regarding or relating to endpoint security. Then uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the product, which is uh, Sophos Intercept X uh, with EDR. Then uh, we take the features of the product where I explain uh, the features that the product uh, actually contains, then the benefits of actually choosing the product. So that's basically the benefits you enjoy from uh, choosing Sophos Asset X as your endpoint security. Then uh, we go to the demo and then uh, the questions uh, from you guys. So, uh, Endpoint security has actually uh, reached a tipping point. Uh, traditional security yeah. was uh, actually being employed where uh, we secure our perimeter using firewall, but uh, the mobile uh, workforce and the growing workforce whereby uh, users or workers are uh, using uh, bring your own devices, the workers are actually working remotely. That's, uh, that has actually increased our uh, landscape so malware has actually grown beyond, and then there's an ever-increasing need to protect uh, our environment from actually every angle. So endpoint security is of uh, paramount importance. We don't have to actually leverage only using our firewall to protect uh, uh, our network. So we have to also put into place proper endpoint security. So the evolution of malware, uh, the traditional malware that we're seeing uh, actually make uh, use of uh, some of these uh, techniques. Exposure prevention, that is where you're actually blocking the URL. You don't want your users to access bad URL. Uh, you actually have web and uh, application control. So we also have a pre executive uh, um, analytics, whereby you actually block malware based on the behavior. That's the execution phase of the malware based on their behavior. You actually block them based on their behavior. So we also have file scanning. So file scanning is also one of the uh, techniques used by traditional malware. But uh, now that we have the advanced malware, the advanced malware includes uh, the use processes such as um, remote access storage, and that is RAT. So this is just basically a scenario where the malware uh, includes a backdoor so that they can have uh, administrative control to the target machine. So these uh, rats are actually downloadable and then they are invisible to uh, the users. So once the host system is actually compromised, the intruder may use it to distribute uh, this remote access trojan to other vulnerable computers and actually establish a bus net uh, um, in your network. So that's one of the processes that this advanced malware is used. So uh, we also have uh, exploit detection, where the exploits are vulnerabilities in software. Those are zero day threats. So those vulnerabilities in software from OEM, these are exploits that are actually used to initiate uh, bad activities in your um, environment. So uh, what is driving the shift to the next generation uh, endpoint security? So uh, the first one is advanced malware. Uh, ad, um, malware are actually getting more and more advanced. So there is ever increasing need for us to secure our organization and network. So we also have limited visibility. 
uh, effective security can only be achieved uh, when you have uh, appropriate or correct visibility. If you don't have uh, visibility to all points of your network, that means that you might not be able to uh, effectively protect your network. So you also have a vulnerability to exploit. Those are exploits in uh, software that are being uh, introduced by OEMs. So once these exploits are actually used by these uh, bad actors, they actually have the ability to uh, infiltrate your organization. So all these are uh, actually um, effects or uh, processes that actually drives the next generation uh, endpoint security. So we have uh, the product, which is Sophos Intercept X. So Sophos Intercept X uh, uh, blocks uh, malware and infection by identifying and also preventing uh, the handful of uh, behaviors used in almost all exploits. So Sophos Endpoint doesn't uh, um, rely on only nature to catch uh, malware, which means that you can actually catch both uh, a malware with signature and also zero day threats without adversely um, affecting the performance of any device in your environment. So, Sophos Intercept X carry out behavior analytics. It actually monitors the behavior of uh, all files in your environment. So, uh, malware can come in different variants. Uh, malware can actually uh, run in your environment and then bring in this all these exploits to infiltrate your organization. So this behavior analytics is just a, a way of identifying how malware operates. So there are different behaviors of malware. Uh, so malware might look to uh, exfiltrate uh, data, or they, can, they might look to maybe uh, encrypt some of the files in your organization. All these are behaviors of malware. So, so first, Intercept X protects you uh, from zero-day threats using behavior analytics, uh, traffic detection, whereby it scans all the HTTP traffic and track all the suspicious traffic also, as well as the five parts of the process, sending any malicious traffic. So it is also integrated uh, with a Sophos firewall. That is our, uh, that is Sophos um, synchronized security, where you can leverage the ability of the firewall and the, um, the endpoint protection. So Sophos uh, Intercept X does anti-exploit. So anti-exploit is just uh, um, malware using or um, taking advantage of vulnerabilities in a software. You might actually have a, a, a package or a software that's the legit package of the software. Then with the vulnerabilities, it can actually be exposed to any malware threats. So those are malware traits that exploit these vulnerabilities. So Sophos Intercept X protects you against these exploits that are being used by this uh, malware. So we have uh, more than uh, 100 million uh, exploits that has been uh, generated each year by malware. So this actually causes different variants of malware. So Sophos Intercept X gives you the ability to be able to prevent against all these exploit prevention techniques used by this malware. So we also have an anti-ransomware uh, where uh, Sophos Intercept X gives you the ability to be able to monitor file access continuously. That is the file path on your devices. You have the ability to be able to monitor them so once an attack is actually detected, the malicious process is actually stopped and the process history is actually investigated. So once this process history is investigated and the malware is found on the device, the original file copies are actually restored. Then the malicious moved from the endpoint. Then there is also added uh, ransom uh, definitions that helps you remove all these extra pieces of malware in the endpoint. So you also have a forensic visibility where user message on desktop admin alert on Sophos Central. That is uh, the Sophos Cloud endpoint uh, where you actually can be able to remotely administer or manage these Sophos endpoints. 
So you have the advanced system clean, where uh, uh, Sophos Intercept X cleans uh, the device after actually finding out where the malware is on your device. This actually gives you effective security against malware. It cleans all the remnants of malware on the endpoints without uh, leaving any trace on the endpoint. So we have a root cause analysis also. So for facet X also does a root cause analysis. So here you have to understand who, what, when, where, why, and how malware actually running in the organization. As I said earlier, effective security actually depends on total visibility in your uh, network. If you don't understand who is in the network, that is each of your users in your network, or what is in your network, what are the processes running on each individual computers, or where are each files located on each PC, so that all this malware don't have hiding place on your endpoint. So you have to be able to define and have all this information at hand for you to be able to effectively um, 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 effectively control this malware in your organization and protect your environment. So uh, the benefit of Intercept X is uh, the first one is performance. Uh, there's no user impact, and then you have a continuous file scanning on each of the endpoints. You don't have don't need signature to scan endpoints, as I said earlier. Uh, so Intercept X does behavior analytics and also detection and protect against zero day threats in your organization. So it can also prevent against every malware attack by rolling back uh, the process once the process has been initiated by the malware. So you also have faster incidence response. Where you can see the root cause visibility into every threat that has actually uh, um, running in your organization. And then lastly, you have uh, your system cleanup where you clean up every piece of malware that uh, was actually detected on the endpoints. So uh, what uh, Sophos Intercept X does differently, uh, application lockdown, where you can lock down uh, a server, for example, that uh, untrusted application will not be able to run on those servers. Um, you also have uh, the crypto guard, where you can prevent against encrypting both your hard drive and, and all the uh, digits on your devices. We also have a security admin where um, Sophos Intercept X shares details with uh, the Sophos firewall, then it works beside other AVs too. So Sophos Intercept X is the complete uh, next generation endpoint security for you. You are able to uh, enforce uh, web application uh, devices and data policies with ease. You can actually integrate the endpoints uh, with the management console that will make uh, uh, easier management for you as a network administrator. You have a web control where you can uh, monitor all of the traffic that is going out from each of the endpoints. Uh, you have device control where you can actually manage uh, access to removable media. Those are uh, maybe USB digs or you don't want uh, some of your users to be able to use uh, your Bluetooth on the device to actually transfer data. You also have uh, the uh, signature engines where you can actually block malware based on their signature. You have uh, the behavior detection, where you can actually block this malware also based on the pre, um, execution behaviors of all this malware in your organization. So you also have uh, the expert prevention, where you can prevent exploits uh, to vulnerabilities in your environment. So Sophos Intercept X actually gives you a simplified management that is it reduces administrative uh, overload. Um, you have this simple intuitive dashboard where you can just manage all the policies and then uh, deploy any other thing you want to deploy from the Sophos Cloud environment. It helps you to meet compliance and then uh, you have a ease of switching where you can able uh, where you can easily switch from a third party device or third party um, uh, antivirus. Uh, to Sophos Intercept X using this uh, software remover tool from uh, Sophos. So it uh, gives you a low impact. There's low impact impact on each of the endpoints that Sophos Intercept X is being installed. Then you have a, um, a technical support provided by uh, Sophos uh, uh, in-house experts 
and then the intelligence from Sufus lab that uh, powers the intercept X, then it is proven also as a industry leader. So I'll just uh, start at the demo, because uh, as I said earlier, I had to rush to the site. So we show how uh, the product works. Okay, so I have the dashboard here. So this is the dashboard for Sophos. So I'll just go back. This is the endpoint. This is Sophos Central. This is the dashboard here. So today we are going to be talking about uh, that intercept X, that's good for endpoints and servers. So I'm going to take us through the endpoint protection and also the server protection. Then after that, uh, we go to the uh, threat analysis, that is Sophos intercept X with EDR, that is uh, the uh, powered um, capabilities of Sophos intercept X with our uh, detection and response system. So for here, I'm going to take us through the endpoint protection. So this is the dashboard here. Uh, at a glance, you have uh, uh, Sophos generated cases and then the admin generated cases here. So these are all the malware that is actually detected in the environment. So you have here, you have a device summary here. Actually, I have uh, just one active device here currently uh, that's been uh, added to the uh, Sophos Intercept X uh, management environment. So here we have uh, the people here. So these are the list of people here that are actually being populated on Sophos Central. So I have this user here. This user is associated with one of the devices that um, Sophos Intercept X is actually being installed on. So I have uh, three test pieces here from Azure, and then I'm going to show us how each of the policies work for Sophos Intercept X and how it actually protects against threats in your environment. So I'm going to go through the first one here. So I have virtual machines here. So I have three virtual machines here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we are going to see how to install Sophos Intercept X on user endpoint. So I'm going to RDP into this virtual machine here. Just apologies. Let me just get into it. Okay, we'll just, that was just credential issues. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, or the first thing I'm going to showcase to us is installing the endpoint. The endpoint is not on this machine. We have uh, I've installed the endpoints on the two other uh, test pieces on uh, Azure. So I'm going to start installation of this endpoint. So I'll show us how it takes and then um, how we have to do about it when you're trying to install the endpoint for each of the are users in your environment. So I will just have to run this down and then take us through some of the policies because this takes uh, some amount of time. 
Okay, so just double click and then I start uh, running the installer. So I install this. So I'm going to go to the second test PC where I'm going to start uh, showing us the properties of each of the policies in Sofo Central. So why this one is installing, so I'll just have to RDP into the second device here. So this just takes a, a few minutes, uh, that's about 10 minutes, but we are not going to wait for this. I just wanted to show how to deploy the endpoint. And when the endpoint is installed, I'm going to show us in Central how it looks like and uh, the user that has been populated on Central. So So I'm going to key in my credential for the second endpoint there. Okay. Right here, I mean the second endpoint here, while this one is uh, installing. So the first thing I'm going to show us here is the uh, does the threat protection feature or the policy on so. These are the list of policies that actually can be enforced on the devices. Okay, so you have the policies here. So the first policy here is the threat protection. So you have uh, the peripheral protect uh, control also. So for the first one, I'm going to show us this is the base policy. The base policy is the default policy for all uh, SOFOS intercept X endpoints. So unless you're actually willing to create another policy. So once I click into the policy, so the first thing that has to be defined in the policy is the user of computers. So the user of computers are the user that the policy is going to be enforced on. Then the next thing that you can actually specify is the group. You can actually create a policy based on user and also group. The group is, a, is actually like a container for devices where you can actually add um, maybe up to like three or four devices or more to a group. Supposedly you have a, like a department in your organization, you can actually have an IT group, then a sales group, a marketing group. So you add all the endpoints that has been added on Sofo Central to each group. So we have the settings here for the threat protection. So I'm just going to uncheck these recommended settings. So as we can see here, this is the threat protection policy here. So the first thing here is use life protection to check against the latest threat from uh, um, Sophos lab, that's, uh, that's Sophos uh, lab, that's engineers that are actually working um, around the clock to actually provide security for us. So you use a uh, live protection to check against this threat information. That means that you are pulling more information uh, from Sophos lab against uh, threats in your organization. So you also have enabled deep uh, learning. Deep learning gives you the, uh, gives uh, Sophos intercept X the ability to be able to uh, scan malware based on machine learning, it gives it that ability. 
and actually helps it to perform the machine analytics and also uh, real-time uh, um, scanning also. So we also have the real-time scanning here also that has been performed by deep learning. Real-time scanning actually helps you to uh, scan malware based on their signature in your environment. So we have some other features there in the policy here. All these are checked by default. So scan download in progress, helps you to scan uh, downloads that are actually made by endpoints, which is in progress. Uh, you also have this, uh, the block access to malicious website. This uh, gives you the ability to be able to block um, access to a malicious website. Those are known websites that are already categorized as malicious. Uh, you also have, um, this, have this check here that's automatically clean up the malware. It's helps you to clean up the malware automatically after finding out that uh, there's malware on those endpoints. So you have all this check in the base policy here. So it is always advisable for you to always use the base policy on each of uh, your endpoints in your organization. That is the base policy for threat protection. So it has all the recommended settings checked by Sophos. So it is always advisable to use recommended settings from Sophos in your threat protection policy. So you have all this. You have also protect network traffic and all, all these are checked by default. So I'm going to go to the first endpoint here and then I'm going to show us how it actually protects against threats using this uh, threat policy here. So I'm just going to load. This is our endpoint here. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to make use of uh, the Sophos malware test. So that is Sophos. Are going to see how Sophos Intercept X actually reacts when a malware is actually downloaded on your PC. So the so we go to Sophos here. Then I will download this file here. What I actually downloaded is just like uh, like an industry standard uh, piece of malware that is actually used to run tests. So I'm going to load the malware and then we'll see how Sophos Intercept X actually reacts. Okay, let me just go into from the browser here. Just pardon me some just a few minutes, please. Okay, let's just so this is the endpoint here. And then I'll go to my downloads from here. Show in folder here. So I'm going to run this piece of malware that I actually downloaded here. So this piece of malware is a uh, um, and IPS, that's uh, uh, intrusion prevention uh, malware. That is uh, an industry standard uh, malware test kit from Sophos. So we can see how Sophos Intercept X is actually reacting. It has actually detected that there's a threat on this device. So this Sophos Intercept X will actually drop you a prompt and you actually also see the prompt in uh, the Sophos Central uh, Cloud uh, dashboard too. So this is the first phase of how it reacts to uh, malware that's it's using intrusion and prevention system. So we also have uh, some malware that are based on uh, signatures. Those are malware that are based on known signatures. So we have a real-time scanning for uh, those malware and then Sophos Intercept X also prevents against those kind of malware. So I'm just going to close uh, this process here. 
since we have already seen now sulfur intercept x uh, actually we add this malware so i'll close this process here so the next thing i'm going to have us test is uh the malware uh, that's the malicious traffic detection sorry rather so the malicious traffic detection is just also uh, like a standard piece of uh, malware threat from sulfur also whereby the just this malware behaves in a way such as uh, um, a, a traditional malware contacting its command and control center. That's a, a small piece of malware actually reaching out that has been deployed in the environment, actually reaching out to its command and control center to collect more instruction as to the next thing that is going to run in your environment. So this type of malware also, Super Center said, X also prevents against this type of malware also. So once I run this, this is the MTD file. Uh, this is the malicious uh, traffic detection file. So once I run it, we will see how surface intercept X also reacts to this type of malware in your environment. So I double click, I'm just waiting for it to run. Apologies, it's just the endpoint is trying to load. So I think this is just trying to load. I want to show us this too before moving to the next, which is the application control, where you can actually uh, protect against malware in your organization by controlling which applications can actually run in your environment. Uh, malware actually being embedded in applications sometimes, and then uh, for you to have the ability to be able to permit which applications can run in your environment is something essential for you uh, as a network administrator for you to be able to protect against threats in your environment. So just the file is. OK, we'll come back to that. I think that there's something wrong with the file. So this is the first one I'm going to show us that has a threat protection here. So uh, we have the application control here. So I'm going to take us the application control before coming back to the peripheral control here. So the application control, as I said earlier, is, uh, is, uh, is the ability for you to be able to permit which applications can actually run in your environment. Uh, some application uh, might actually be uh, bad for you because at the current moment we are uh, bad actors are actually exploiting uh, vulnerabilities in this software package at that particular time. You might not want to uh, run Adobe um, uh, uh, version uh, 2 in your environment. Maybe there's a, there's a known exploit for that specific version of Adobe. You can actually prevent those kind of uh, software from actually running in your environment by using the application control policy. So from the application control policy here, yeah, this is the base policy here. Yeah. So I can click into the application control policy here. So that you can actually create a, a, the a policy based on users and group. So I'm just going to go straight to the settings there. So for the settings there, you can actually you have to actually check this that detect controlled application when user actually access them. Then you actually check this block the detected application. So you can actually select which application you want to run in your environment after choose this add or delete uh, edit list. So you have all these uh, various categories of uh, application that you can actually prevent from running in your environment. So you have the archiving tool here. You have uh, all these categories there. As an administrator, I might not want uh, um, endpoints to be able to run PowerShell scripts because PowerShell scripts sometimes are actually associated with malware. So you don't want uh, some of this malware to be able to run these commands in your environment. You can actually block uh, your endpoints from being able to run PowerShell or any system tool application 
in your environment. So we'll just demo that. So let me just just search. Then you can see that the PowerShell is checked here. We have PowerShell checked here. So you just have to save to the list here. I can actually choose to say, okay, I don't want uh, um, a specific version of probably Adobe Reader to be able to load in my environment, or I don't want a specific version of say, of uh, say Google Chrome in my environment. So those are all the things that you can actually check. You have the ability to be able to check which one you don't want to run in your environment, or you don't want um, uh, maybe a telnet client to be able to run in your environment, let's say a forty. You don't want users to be able to use any forty in your environment. So I will just save this to the list. So it is added here. So I will come here and then I will add. Um, let's say I don't want uh, Chrome to run in my environment. So I will just come to the internet browser here. Then I click Google Chrome here. Then I save to the list here. So these are uh, three piece of uh, these applications that I've already chosen in this policy will not be able to run on each of the endpoints that I actually install this uh, intercept X on. So I'll just have to save this policy here. So I've saved this application policy here. It takes a while for this uh, policy to be able, about a minute or two uh, minutes for the policy to reflect on each of the endpoints in your organization where Surface Intercept X is actually installed on. So one of those uh, devices is here. So I actually have that policy installed. Uh, that's the PowerShell. So I can try to run PowerShell here first to see the prompt. So it takes about a few minutes for it to be able to enforce those policies, as I said earlier. Just wait a bit. So this is just one of the features that uh, Surface Intercept X gives you. So I'm just going to check if there's a policy application here also. So we have policy application here also. I just want to wait so for some few minutes so the policy can be enforced before testing it, just about a minute or two before testing it. So let's try now. Okay, we can see that the use of uh, policy has actually been enforced. We say the use of application policy has been blocked by your administrator. This shows us that uh, X uh, gives you the ability to be able to control which type of uh, application can actually run in your environment. So I'm just going to try the PowerShell again. Okay, so here we have it. So the use of uh, application Microsoft PowerShell has been built by you. That's the by your administrator. So this is uh, one useful ability that you have as a network administrator. You are able to uh, select which version of application you want to run in your environment, or after uh, doing uh, like an investigation of threat in your environment, you found out that there are specific applications that are actually associated to malware or threat in your environment, you can actually block those applications from actually running in your environment. So the next thing on the list here is, I'm going to show us the peripheral controls. Might not be able to uh, demo that because it's they are virtual machines from Azure, but I'll take us through the policies here. So uh, then you, have, you can enforce it against users and group. Uh, then you have uh, your settings here. So this is the most important, uh, uh, part of your policy. So here you have a uh, disabled peripheral controls here. So here you've actually selected not to uh, monitor these peripherals on your uh, endpoint on the users. 
So you can actually choose to monitor but not block all the peripherals connected to each of the endpoints where you actually install uh, your endpoint. We all know that our uh, users are, are used to bringing uh, our removable digs, uh, connecting it to company owned uh, devices. So we don't want them to introduce malware into the endpoint, or you don't want them to be able to copy out our confidential information. You can actually set this on Sufo Central here yeah, using intercept text. So here, yeah, when you choose monitor, but do not block uh, peripherals, this gives you the ability to be able to see all the attempts uh, to connect to peripherals on your logs here yeah, on uh, Sufo uh, Central. Yeah. But when you choose control access, you can be able to uh, specify which uh, peripherals should be able to run on each of the endpoints in your organization. You might say you don't want uh, Bluetooth, uh, definitely block Bluetooth, or uh, you don't want uh, removable storage uh, for those users or endpoints to be able to use removable storage. You can actually choose to block removable storage, or you don't want them to use uh, their wireless, you can actually block it. So these are all uh, the variants of uh, policies that you can actually enforce uh, regarding peripherals in your environment. So once you check all this, the users will not be able to uh, use each of these uh, features on their endpoint devices. So for here, the users will not be able to use a uh, removable storage. You might also choose to just uh, say read only. For read only, uh, users who uh, be able to put the peripherals uh, and have read-only access to your removable storage. They will not be able to copy any confidential information. In reverse, so here yeah, you can actually choose uh, a desktop messaging for uh, uh, the prompt. So this is the peripheral control here that you can actually use there so i'll just have to save this policy here. although this policy can be tested because it's an azure endpoint because we cannot connect uh peripherals so uh, the third one here that i actually love to talk about is the data loss prevention uh in the data loss prevention you can actually be able to prevent uh, uh confidential information from getting outside your uh, endpoints that's the organization endpoint assigned to each user here for the prevention here, I'm going to try to create a new policy, although I've been editing these policies. So for data prevention, we can try to create a new policy here. So we add a new policy. So we can select which option we want. So these are the options. These are the list of policies from Sophos Intercept X here. So we can actually choose data loss prevention policy, which how do you want the, uh, the policy to be enforced? Is it based on users or based on devices? So we are actually selecting based on devices you can actually continue. So we select which device, this device here. So we select the first device here. We can also select the second. This is the endpoint here. I've actually successfully installed the endpoint here. So let's this is great to actually start. So this is the endpoint here. You can basically see it there that's reflected on Sufo Central. So you can just take this assign. So you come to your settings here. So you use rule for data transfer. So you check this. Create a custom policy. Then I'm going to take a, a new content rule. So I'm going to name this. Uh, I can just name it. Uh, let's say uh, a test. Uh, then we have to add a description because it's important. Uh, this prevents exfiltration, confidential information. So we actually have conditions here where the file contains, you actually said the file contains so 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 uh, that's that's the confidential information that you are trying to prevent from escaping. And then uh, where the destination is. That's where you are trying to send it to. So you actually select this. These are selected by default. Or if you have an exclusion, you select this. So you just have to select allow. Let's select allow transfer if user confirm. That means that we just nudge the user. When the user is trying to uh, transfer out confidential information that uh, contains a specific keyword, uh, so for intercept, we nudge the user that you are about to transfer this information 
and it is not permitted in the environment, then the user can actually choose to allow or block, or you can outrightly block transfer of this file type in your environment. So you can go next. So where the rule contains, so where the rule contains, I'll select a custom source here. So I'll select Learn IT Confidential here. Yeah? So this, I created a custom list. This is a custom list uh, on the global settings where I define the content of what I don't want uh, the user to be able to transfer out of the organization. So I'll take us back to that place when I'm done. So once I select this, then you can select the destination. What's the destination? That's where you are trying to send out the file from. Are you trying to send out the file from email client? And virtually just select all, or they are trying to select it from internet browser. For the sake of this uh, webinar, I'll just select all. Then I'll finish this. So I'll assign the policy a name, let's say an Azure test policy. So. So we have an Azure test policy here. So this rule allows a user to be able to confirm that they are actually trying to send out a confidential information and their administrator will be notified. So once the user sees that, the user can actually choose to maybe allow to still send this confidential information or to block the transfer of this information. So I'll just go back to the. Global settings here yeah. and show us this custom control list. Okay, so uh, this is the custom control list that are actually used for that policy. So we have a lenity.com here. Yeah. So the policy that we are actually creating is to allow user to transfer information if they can only confirm when the document as lenity.com. So if the document as a lenity.com, I've actually categorized it as a confidential information. So for the user to be able to send this uh, document outside the organization, the user has to confirm and then allow the transfer of this information outside the environment. So I just wanted to show us this custom control list that I've already created. And just save this. And we go to one of these endpoints here. So I have this notepad here. So I have a lenity.com is the best website. So we created this as a confidential information in the custom control list. So I will, as a user now, try to send this information outside. From the user. So I will try to use. Uh, an email client. So I have an email client here. So that's a, a web email. So I will just have to go to a uh, new message. So, so uh, let's I'll just put. Oops. So now I will try to attach this file to so browse this computer. So just Oh, sorry, I created a policy earlier to block uh, Google Chrome. So Google Chrome has been blocked, but because I opened it, so, so let's just try the Microsoft uh, Edge. The policy I created for the application control earlier contains uh, Google Chrome, uh, Porty, and also PowerShell. So uh, the Intercept X is blocking this uh, Google Chrome from actually running in the environment. So I would. Outlook.com. Mm 
So I'll just uh, basically, okay, it's signed in here. I'm signed in here. So I'll just go to new message here. Yeah. Okay, so I just uh, try to attach the file here. So I'll go to desktop. Okay, so I have the file here. And I'll try to open the file here. Okay, so we can see now that Surface Intercept X has actually intercepted the file because the file actually contains uh, a confidential information. So it actually prompted the user that do you still want to transfer this confidential information. So the user can actually choose to allow. Once the user allows, it actually logs this on Sophos uh, Central for the administrator to be able to see, or the user can actually choose to block this transfer. So they, this is the effect of the policy. You can actually restrict confidential information from being sent out of the organization to prevent data loss in your organization. So this, so I can just allow it. So once I allow the message, you can actually send the message successfully. User can actually send the message successfully. So the next policy I have here, I just have to run through because of time. So I have uh, the uh, web control here. Uh, I would have loved to uh, showcase this, but because due to time, so the web control feature actually prevents a uh, user uh, to be able to access uh, some of the website that has been categorized by the administrator. Uh, for example, if you don't want uh, some of your users to be able to access go.com or uh, maybe uh, sports uh, related websites or fashion or ads, so you can actually block some of these uh, websites on your end devices so you can actually uh, maximize the use of uh, bandwidth in your organization and prevent users from connecting to a bad and uh, known domain website so you also have uh, the update manager here yeah? the update manager is used to schedule uh, the time of updates you don't want all your endpoints in the organization to update uh, at the same time or when uh, there's uh, or during work hour so you have to you have the ability to be able to schedule updates for this endpoint here. You can actually schedule the updates for probably Saturday uh, at a specific time. So all these endpoints will update at this specific time so that they will not disrupt uh, activities in your organization or exhaust all the old bandwidth in your organization. So um, just let me go to uh, server protection. Eh? So uh, the first one I showcased there is Sophos Intercept X for endpoint. So you also have Sophos Intercept X for servers. So for Sophos Intercept X for servers, two things I would just like to just glance through here. So uh, the first one is a uh, server lockdown. So we have a server lockdown for Sophos Intercept X for servers. So in this server lockdown features, you're actually preventing any uh, um, application from running on that server at that particular point of time. So when you enable lockdown on each of the server that uh, Intercept X is uh, being installed on, applications will not be or untrusted or unsanctioned application will not be able to run at that particular point in time. That also blocks malware, which is trying to install an application. Probably uh, a malware like that, uh, a remote access Trojan malware is trying to install an application at that point in time, this uh, feature will actually block it. It is only application that has been uh, certified by an administrator that would be allowed to run on this endpoint. So I would love to showcase these uh, just policies here. So let me just uh, go to the next one uh, for the server protection here. Yeah? So the server protection here, yeah, you also have uh, what we call uh, the live response and detection. For the live response and detection, the live response and detection gives you the ability to be able to remotely run an administrative level uh, command line on each 
of your devices in your organization. Probably after doing uh, a malware research using the threat center, then you discover that uh, there's a malware, uh, malicious process running on the servers at that current point in time. You can actually use uh, this live response to actually kill that specific process for, for the first one. So we just have to run through this, then I'll hand over to Ife. So this is this server here. So we must desktop connection. So I'll remote to this server here. So oh, I'm already in uh, one of the servers here. So this is one the server in Sofa Central here. So so the first thing I'll just do is just showcase uh, the lockdown policy as I actually explained earlier. The server is currently on lockdown as is currently locked. You can actually see it from the Sofa Central console here. Yeah. So once I try to run any application on the server, let me let me run Winra. Okay, it says so first lockdown has blocked WinRA. So you will not be able to run any application or any malware will not even be able to install any application on this uh, server at a particular point in time where uh, the server lockdown feature is enabled. So this actually gives you leverage to be able to control which applications are installed on your server or uh, your servers are pr precious uh, to you uh, as a network administrator. So this uh, administrative level uh, and policy gives you the ability to be able to restrict any unsanctioned uh, installation of application on your server by malware. So the other one I would just like to show us is the is the policy here. Yeah? So the policy here, from the policy here on the settings there, so what you can actually, you have uh, the power to be able to exclude uh, some files and folders. Supposedly, uh, your site is on lockdown and you want to install some file as an administrator, you've already given a go ahead to install file as an administrator. You can just add uh, the folder here. So once you add the folder, the file path here or the file here, you'll be able to install the application on the server. Then after installing the application, you actually have to come and remove the exclusion so that applications will not be able to run from that specific folder. So the next thing I'm going to show us here again is the live threat response, as I said earlier. So I'm going to run an administrative So I have it here. So I'm going to run this uh, malware here. Okay. Uh, so I have a server lockdown currently on. I would not be able to run that here. Okay, let me just run that. Let me show us the policy. That's a live response from here. I said the live response can be run on any devices in your organization. It actually gives you the ability for you to have an administrative level command line to be able to remotely uh, um, um, run commands on uh, endpoints or servers in your organization. So I have this endpoint here. So this is one of my endpoints here. So this is central test dot that I actually installed last year. So let's just use the first one here. So I will just drop a few. So this is it here. So you can actually make use of live threat response there. 
So what I'm going to do now is on this endpoint here, I'm going to run a malicious process. Yeah, does that's the malicious as uh, the sofo skips here yeah, to simulate a malware actually running on this device currently. So I've actually started a process here. Yeah. So the malware is currently running on this endpoint. So for you as an administrator, you can kill this process after making your research on Sophos Center using a uh, Sophos Live uh, Threat Analysis Center. So the thing I'm going to do for me, I'm going to run this live response from here. So we start a new session here. You have to give it a description for you to be able to uh, remotely uh, connect to the command line from Sophos Central. So I just say investigating uh, MTD as a malicious traffic detection, then I actually start the process there. So bear in mind, we already have this malicious traffic running on this endpoint here. So We have here, yeah. so I have a command line interface access to this device here. Yeah. So this is a device here. Yeah. I can actually remotely run commands to clean out our uh, malicious processes on this endpoint here. Yeah. So what I can actually do from uh, the command line here, yeah, I can do a task list here. Yeah. It's taking a while for it to load. Uh, let me stop this process because uh, we've already uh, exhausted uh, too much of time, and then this is going to take a time for it, a while for it to load. Uh, there's something I have to clear some of the processes on the PC. It's because uh, it's a test PC from Azure, and that's why it doesn't really have uh, too much uh, space on it. So it's actually dragging a bit. I can actually run the command. The analysis center is a, uh, is a Sophos Intercept X with EDR feature that actually allows you to own threats in your organization. This gives you the ability to be able to actively look for threats and query all your database in your environment. So you can see all the malicious process actually running in your environment. So for at a glance, we have the dashboard here. So this is the dashboard here. This is the uh, Sophos generated cases here. So this is a sample case here from Sophos. This is actually a malicious file that has been detected in the organization here. So you have, a, this is the server here. As I, this, that's just one of the test pieces in my uh, environment. Yeah. So we can actually see the root cause of this uh, virus. Yeah. So the root cause is a Firefox. So the Firefox is uh, uh, the internet browser, which was used to download the malware. So we can see that this is the beacon. The beacon is actually the file, that's the malicious file that's actually tried to run maybe a malicious process in your organization or in your environment. So it is detected and it is cleaned up. So you have all this here. You have the ability to be able to see how the process occurs here. Yeah? So this is just an high level of how the processes occur. So from that download to execution of this malware. So I can actually choose to show direct path to this. So you can see that it is from a Firefox version 7, which is a parent to a version Firefox 17. Uh, IR. So it runs uh, this process, that is the updater process. So the updater process is a parent to this file here. So this file actually generated by Sophos Ips here. So this Sophos Ips writes a Sophos process here. So, and is this Sophos process, uh, the Sophos Ips process that actually generated the malware that has been cleaned up by Sophos Intercept X. So you have the ability to be able to see the process from uh, download to execution. So with this information uh, in hand, you can actually do so much more. 
they can actually choose to isolate this device. Probably uh, you still have investigation going on in your organization and you've not actually certified that the file is malicious. You can actually choose to isolate this device and continue your investigation. So once you isolate this device, this device will not be able to talk to any uh, uh, resource in your environment. So you can also choose to scan this device here. So once you choose to scan this device here, uh, the endpoint will run an on-demand scan on the endpoint. Uh, that's the uh, Sophos endpoint will run an on-demand scan on the uh, on the device. That's the endpoint. That's the, uh, either computer or server. So you actually have the ability to also run a live discovery query, a live discovery query where you can actually see the list of tasks or you can actually kill those tasks immediately on the endpoints by giving you administrative uh, command line uh, ability for you to be able to run this command here. So any of this file at this process, you can click on any of this file to see more properties of this file here. So once you click it, you see uh, more properties here. You can click this process here. So, okay. So once you click each of these process, you can actually click to get more detailed information. This will build up your uh, threat hunting ability. You can see that this uh, um, uh, Sophos Ips uh, is a known bad reputation. So you have already you have the uh, bar here. So you can see that it is a bad reputation. If it is a, a known uh, application that is good for the environment, you would have actually seen the bar going towards this good reputation. So you can also choose to request latest uh, intelligence from Sophos uh, Labs. Yeah, you see the uh, shell of the file, that's the signature of the file, the path of the file. So you can actually do a check a report summary. So the prevalence, uh, this file has been popular, then it was first seen in 2018, then uh, last thing in 2021. So the file is 100% suspicious. You can come to the file breakdown or file properties where you can also see the target machine, the file size, uh, the file type, or you can come to the file breakdown. All this gives you uh, detailed information about that process that is actually running in your organization. You can actually see if the file is signed here. This file is signed here, because uh, this is uh, just a, uh, a test version of malware that has been uh, used by Sophos to just test uh, some of these endpoints here. Yeah? So it is signed. So most malicious uh, files are not signed. So once you see this also unsigned, it's an indication of malware probably running in your environment. You also have to, the ability to see all the DLL imports. Those are the imports that uh, the process actually used when it is actually trying to initiate connection or working. So all this, yeah, it's I, um, uh, very, very good for you. Uh, as an administrator to on -trex. So you can even take uh, the shell of the file here and then um, run it um, on virus total for you to be able to see. So you can run it on virus total for you to be able to get more detailed information on these tricks that you are actually hunting in your environment. So even though you don't have uh, these Sophos generated threat cases here, yeah, you can actually choose to run a live discovery in your environment where you can actually also choose to where you can actually also choose to run uh, queries in your organization. So uh, for example, you might actually choose to want to run uh, a query on your old database. That's your organization, that's your endpoint, or maybe probably unsigned applications that we are run in your environment. As I said earlier, unsigned applications are indication of malware. Those are um, applications that we are not signed. So those are malicious applications. So once you click this, so you can actually run this command, select the endpoints. Which endpoints do you want to run these queries on? So you can actually select any one of these endpoints that you want to run this query on. Then you can actually run the query. Once you run the query, it gives you uh, the list of devices that actually run uh, any on time application for a, uh, maybe a 30 uh, days, 30 days period. So you also have uh, the ability. So I just go back to categories. You have the ability to be able to run different uh, queries in your organization. So the other query you can run is you can actually run, uh, decide to run a query for um, uh, 
uh, network processes that uh, actually have uh, open connections to network processes. So, okay. Okay, so processes with open network connections. So once you run these processes with open network connections, this will give you uh, all the processes that has a uh, open connection to the internet on your endpoints, on those endpoints that you selected. Probably select uh, this sum uh, only just to run. So this will give you a detailed uh, information on all those processes that have open network connections. Those are uh, features of malware trying to reach out to a remote uh, command and control center server. So some malware actually do this. And then with this, you can actually get more information. So we can see on this, our server now, one of our endpoints here. So, uh, sorry. So on one of our endpoints here, we can actually see a process. This is one of one process here. This is local port. It's called trying to connect to this IP here. So this is an IP. We can do probably more investigation on this IP here. Let's say we can go to goip.net to see where this device is actually connecting to. So that will give us an insight of is a malware trying to remotely connect to a command and control center that's actually planning to deliver more uh, payload into your organization. As you can see here, this process on this uh, server here that's connecting to this uh, remote IP. This remote IP is from North America. So you can still say uh, it's a bit certified. You don't want uh, uh, your devices to be connecting to probably maybe Russia or Afghanistan or something. That's also like an indication of malware in your environment, trying to uh, talk to a remote server in these uh, locations. So you can you have different level of query that you can actually run to actually hunt a uh, threat in your organization. You can actually choose to probably uh, run an, uh, a, tra um, uh, a query. Let's, let me just close this, another query. So you can actually choose to run another query, probably let's say a, a device query. So device query, you have lots of a query that you can actually uh, run on this your endpoints here. So you can actually see, okay, patches applied. You can check each of your endpoints in your organization that, that okay, are, they, uh, are patches being applied to this endpoint? So we know that uh, um, OEM virtually uh, releases patches to prevent against exploits on endpoint. So these patches, we can actually run uh, a query against it. So we see all the Windows devices that are updated in your environment. So you can actually be able to see which one of the devices are actually vulnerable in your environment. So all this level of query you have, you have so much query that you can actually run in your environment. So the query is also um, boosted by data lake. So data lake is uh, just uh, an aggregation of data from all your Sophos tenants. That means that if you have a Sophos firewall, that means you have uh, your Sophos firewall transferring uh, data on-prem to your Sophos uh, central dashboard. Here. So you can actually run more queries on more data. So you have more data for you to be able to run queries on. You can actually have uh, probably a Sophos email uh, product uh, that's also integrated into data lake. So that gives you the ability to be able to run more queries on more data. The more data you have, the more accurate or the more information you have on your organization. So also you can also choose to schedule query. Maybe you want a specific query to be running at uh, maybe Fridays or a specific day of the week for you as an administrator to have insights of what is happening in your organization. You can actually choose to create or schedule a query in your organization. So all this, I would have loved to go deeply more into this, but, uh, but time permits, time permits, no man. So uh, if I just let us uh, do this. I think this is uh, enough. I've uh, given a brief of uh, the threat uh, analysis uh, that's active threat on thing from our uh, Sophos Intercept X with EDR. Thank you, right. Thank you. Yes, um, yeah, um, thank you. Um, that was a very, very exhaustive session and very insightful as well. Um, particularly for me, I've seen how 
admin rights and privileges can help ensure compliance within an organization to protect them from security breach. I mean, that's, that's highly insightful. But then as well, we have some questions here and I think some people need to help them clear up some, some things. Okay, so the first one we have is from Uche Chuku Chukwai. I hope I'm right. So he says that um, does Sofo Central have AD integration for enumerating groups or computer objects for easily categorizing action and endpoints? Uh, so that question um, is for you. Yes, you can actually uh, choose to import uh, users from your AD. You have AD integration. So you can actually choose to import. Let me just uh, go back back to overview. So as I actually mentioned here, uh, Sophos policy is based on users and devices. Yeah. So uh, you can actually choose to add a user manually. You can choose to import the user from CSV and you can choose to set up an Active Directory services. So this Active Directory service will allow you to import users to this uh, Sophos Central dashboard so that you can enforce policy on each of your user in your organization. Or if you have a device a group set up on your Active Directory, you can actually use this setup Active Directory link to integrate Sofo Central with your uh, um, Active Directory so that you can uh, populate those information that you need and enforce the required policies. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, there's another question as well from Uchechuku. He had earlier um, asked if um, it is possible to use the Sofos application command center to automatically update Sofos firewall rules on um, land threats without manual intervention, more like a coordinated internal external perimeter protection between the two products. So is that is that possible? Okay, I need to understand the question. Is it are you trying to integrate your firewall and then the endpoint? Can you add um, the question? Okay, let me just read it again. But if Vijayku is here, Vijayku, could you please signify so you could um, put some clarity to your question? But then here is what he wrote, anyways. He said, "Is it possible to use the Sophos application command center to automatically update Sophos firewall rules on land threats without manual intervention?" I think he's talking of an automatic update that does not occur manually. Yeah, an automatic no, no, update. I, yeah, I, that's 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 not. Uh, so well, you can't update uh, firewall rules automatically uh, using uh, so for, okay. uh, central. So the only thing it has is uh, the integration, that is the synchronized security, whereby once the firewall uh, finds out any threat in uh, the network, it sends uh, uh, a signal to the endpoint for it to run uh, a scan on the uh, machine. It's just like, uh, say, uh, a, an endpoint uh, is uh, um, infested by malware, it's trying to send traffic out from your network. Your firewall at the perimeter sends that it is trying to send the traffic to a malicious uh, website. The firewall can actually send information to the endpoint on the device that it should run a, uh, a scan on the device. That is, uh, that is being powered by Sophos uh, synchronized security. So the endpoint will run a scan on the device and clean out uh, the malware. Why the uh, firewall isolated from uh, the network? So that's the only uh, thing that uh, can be done in that scenario. Wow, thank you so much. That was a very brilliant answer. And um, there's one more question here though. It says, does the same endpoint installer work for both Windows and Linux OS platforms? No. You have to choose uh, the type of uh, installer you want to download. Yeah, can you see uh, this is the prompt here? Yeah. So you have to either come to, if you are trying to install uh, the, the installer for uh, an, um, an endpoint, because I said that uh, the Sophos Intercept X for endpoint is different from the Sophos Intercept X for servers. So you have to actually choose the type of installer that you want and actually choose to download the complete Windows installer or the Mac OS installer. And you can actually choose to download the co uh, the components. Uh, do you want uh, the component to come with device encryption or only Sophos Intercept X? So you, got, you can actually choose the type of component you want to download. 
Wow, thank you so much, Ahmed. Thank you so much. That was a very brilliant and insightful session. Um, well, like uh, earlier mentioned, you know, if you follow, if you get to follow us on all of our social media channels, on particularly on YouTube, you'd have access to all of this free resource. You know, all the webinar series we've been having around tech security, and as well, we had earlier mentioned that um, for the sake of um, recording for the um, webinar, the webinar will be uploaded on YouTube. So I think in the future events, I would appreciate if we could all ensure that our videos are mute so that we do not, you know, um, violate our privacy in any way, knowing that this video is going to be going on YouTube. As well, the form, the evaluation form has been shared on the um, chat window. You could help fill the form so we could better access our your experience in the webinar to know how to do this better. So thank you so much for um, the brilliant session, Mr. Ahmed. Um, I mean, it was really, really beautiful, very insightful. Um, I just want to ask if there are no questions. We'll be coming to a close now because our wonderful people here, had, uh, they've indulged us, I mean, a, a lengthy amount of time to just be able to go through this webinar. And we are very grateful for that. And um, so I just want to ask a very quick one. Are there still any questions or we would like to come to a close now. So any other questions, if you have any questions, you could just um, use the um, raising hand emoticon and then we'll attend to you. Okay, so um, if there are no questions, okay, I, I just go one now from which she worked earlier. So he said that, please, how does it intercept zero day threats, like you said? Okay, I said, uh, Sophos Intercept X has uh, the ability to be able to do a uh, pre execution analysis and also uh, block malware based on their behavior. For zero, threat, uh, zero day threats, uh, those are threats that are actually not known threats. Because known threats are actually uh, threats that already have signatures. So, uh, Sophos Intercept X does a real time scanning to prevent against those type of malware uh, that's, uh, that has a known uh, signature. But for the zero day threat, so uh, malware um, uh, actually categorized on their behavior. So, uh, malware tends to maybe behave in such a specific way, like maybe encrypt uh, a device or maybe try to take out data from a device or change uh, the uh, boot sequence of a device. So all these behaviors are actually are known uh, by Sophos uh, uh, Labs and it is already integrated with the software. So the software knows all these behaviors of the malware, even though it does not know the signature of the malware. So it actually blocks uh, this malware based on their behavior. That is how it actually prevents against both uh, um, zero-day uh, uh, threats and also exploit uh, uh, detection on um, endpoints. Wow, thank you so much. I mean, you've taken us on a whole other level um, as it pertains to cloud security, and um, that was very brilliant. Thank you. And so um, I think that is the end of the webinar, seeing that we no longer have any further questions. Like I mentioned earlier, you want to ensure that you follow us on all our social media platforms, you know, to get uh, the first to notice every update we have on our webinar series is just a free resource and a free content for you to um, upskill yourself to, you know, get abreast of every development within the tech um, tech security space. So thank you very, very much for joining us for today's webinar. And uh, we trust and hope that um, the next one we'll be having, you know, we'll be having um, everyone around as well and ready to you know, learn further, you know, as pertaining to what we do on our Tuesday Tech Security Series. So thank you so much. We're really grateful. So let's have a lovely evening, everyone. Goodbye.